<laughs> what it do? What it do, gumshoe? I don't know. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Death Fresh Show. It is I, Mr. Tone Death. We are back in the building on a Sunday. Let's get higher. Let's get higher. Shout out to everybody that made it into the New Year's. Like, yeah, 2022 was bullshit. But we here, though. Uh, yeah. Shout out to the Philadelphia Eagles for uh, making goddamn well people know that they are number one yeah, with totally. a bullet. Tom. What up, though? We don't care about the Eagles. I care about the Eagles. I, I know. I'm happy that you have a winning team. Two winning teams. The Knicks are winning? I watch soccer, too. Who's your soccer team? You know what? I just love let's soccer talk, as a whole. Let's talk about this. Because, like, Manchester you, be kicking ass, my nigga. Niggas don't be watching soccer. Niggas but, don't get it. But I, I watch highlights. I, I don't. I don't know if I can sit through a whole game. You can't. You wanna know why? Cause that shit is just nothing but a foreign commentator telling you about how great a player is. No, even when I, even when they do, like I was watching a little bit of the World Cup. Like even when it's English, like soccer just feel like it's for as fast paced as it is, like up and down and moving, like basketball. It it seems fucking slow. It seems slow because you either score or you don't. It's like I don't. And like I don't like to watch sports when I don't know the rules. Like hockey, I what's a hat trick? Uh, to score would be like more than two people defending you. I see. I think. I, see, you don't even know. <laughs> like a, you just no. I'm trying to the... remember. I'm trying to remember. I went. I've been to hockey games before. Uh, I believe a hat trick is when one person scores three times. That's what it. Is. So it's like a turkey. Yeah, like in bowling, like if we get three strikes in a row, type shit. But. You know, if I would have known, a hat trick? <laughs> I don't know. And sometimes they throw hats on the floor. They have to stop the whole game, get all hats off fucking ice. Mm-mm, don't do that. Yeah, it's weird shit. Don't do that shit. Oh, don't throw your hat down there. Keep your damn hat to yourself. Uh, you know, I'm our... not throwing my Mitchell in this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe they hand out hats at the door. I don't know. Like, like it's the same recycled skull caps. Like, who's doing this laundry? Like, I watch these. What? I'm like then maybe they're just recycling skull caps. Like y'all watch these. Like they throw them on the ice and then they sweep them into a room and you hand them out at the next guy. Okay. Hey, who who watches just give me a cup there? Watch these who watches these fucking hats. But um if I would have known what I know now about life, I would have played baseball in high school. For sure would play baseball. Now you are aware. Yes. You haven't changed anything about your ne- your everyday life, right? But you probably would still be the same size you are. Now, not even talking about weight, talking about height. Facts. You're too tall for baseball. You think so? No, you are. Seriously. Your strike zone is too huge. Pause. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Major pause. Okay. But no, real no, shit. No, no. Let's talk baseball. Okay. So what's the average average height no. of a baseball player? About five something. Like I'm, I'm considered an average height baseball player. Maybe a little tall, but if you take your hand, you stick it straight out. Okay, the space from where your hand is right to the ground is your strike zone. Meaning, when you swing a ball, that's how much space that pitcher has to put that ball anywhere but a good place for you to hit. So the taller you are, the bigger space area you have the more likely you're not going to do good. Prime example, Jordan is good at baseball, but he's also 6'6". So he sucked when he decided to go quit basketball and go play baseball. He's entirely too big for the game. Pause. God damn, this is a pausable moment. (laughs) He's too big for the game. So that's why he didn't do good his two years. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> My mother called, so I answered the phone. She was like, I forgot she was gone. Yes, mom, I'm potting right now. But um, so a lot a lot of shit happened at the end of 2022. But you know, I feel like all the all the dumb shit happened when you go on break. She's like, Oh, I want to talk about this. So like not even that I want to like cover it, I just wanna get my jokes off. Cause it'd be some shit you'd be like, yo, this, this is impossible. Like 
Okay. So Tory Lanez <laughs> is officially found guilty. Yeah, he's guilty. Now, like, did he shoot her? I don't know if he shot her. I just know man got shot. No, he shot her. See, that but, was a great thing. But see, when you say, when you phrase it like, Tone, you shot me, it, it to me is like, Tone pulled out a gun, <laughs> aimed at that wine, and then he shot. That's not what I really think happened in this scenario. Like after just listening to, like okay. I don't feel like that's what happened. Because if you if you pulled a gun and aimed it, you're a corny nigga for that. Well, here's the thing, and this is what I love. I love about public trials because once the case has been closed, whether you're found guilty or innocent, all evidence that was used in the trial can be spoken upon. You, you it can come out now. The evidence comes out. Okay. They showed they 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 showed and played some of the audio footage of Meg's friend having a conversation with Tori, talking about I don't feel right taking the charge for you. I don't feel right lying for you. At the end of the day, whether or not it started with a little man in his complex and he getting angry and swinging a gun around, because that's the way I pictured it. Your little nigga just swinging the gun around, trying to be big, pulled the trigger because he didn't know what he was doing, ricocheted off the ground, nicked uh, Meg in her foot. She hits the ground because these two niggas, Meg and Tori, got a little popularity. The friend was going to take the charge because she ain't got nothing to lose. And that's not what happened. But at the end of the day, I'm not mad. That Tory Lane is going to jail. No, no, I'm no. not happy no, no. that Meg got justice because she deserved it. I'm laughing my ass off at all the niggas who was like, wait until the truth comes out. Like they was lying on Tory. Well, I mean, hey, sometimes you go to jail. I never realized how many. Men truly hate women. You can't tell by the Facebook stats. I block them. I block most of them dudes. Cause I don't, I don't need I don't need to see that. Like, who hurt you? Every three days there's a nigga on Facebook having a conversation talking about what do you bring to the table as a woman. Are these the niggas that got left? Are these the kids as a result of the City High song? I don't know. But um, were you crying all alone? On the bedroom floor because she was hungry. I don't know. These niggas need hugs. They don't want hugs. Unless it's from their mans and them. They gotta relax. Some of y'all took bros over hoes too seriously. Yeah, they did. I was like that. Like, why do you hate women so much? You know who don't hate women? Who was that? Derek Jackson. See, we was on break when the news broke about this nigga. Yeah, he, he's a cornball, too. He's, he's a fuck nigga. He's a fuck nigga that got caught. So for those of you guys who don't know about the story of Derek Jackson, and honestly, we actually should have just broke our, our silence <laughs> and recorded it as soon as the news broke. He once again has been caught with another woman cheating. He is awesome. I mean, don't get me wrong. As a man, the woman he picked was an upgrade. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the fact that you got caught before, drug your wife, bonded and all, on Al Gore's internet. Facts. And tried to pretend like you a happy, loving couple, only to go out and do this shit again. Mm-hmm. And this is who and, and this is who women took, you know, relationship advice from. There were really? there were women out there who was literally following his tutelage. For what? Because they're pick me's. So now the pick me's don't have a messiah anymore. I found out the prophet was fake. Yeah, Queen. <laughs> he called though. Like, how you cheat on your girl? Get caught talk, by your girl. Talk her into taking you back. 
And then it's like, hey, you know what? This not working. <laughs> like that, like, yo, that's like next level of torture. I say let's keep it a buck. They really probably wasn't together no more anyway. And instead of him owning up to it, because you thought it was gonna hurt his bottom line. Cause you can't be a relationship guru and your relationship suck. Facts. Like that's kind of hard. Kind of hard to believe. I think that's been going around on Facebook right now where everybody's been like, Don't don't give me advice if you single. I can okay, I can I can jack that a little bit. Depending on what we're talking about. I mean, I get it. You can't tell me how to keep a woman if you don't have one. I can tell you what to do to lose one. I can tell you what I did wrong. Yeah, I can tell you what I did wrong. And I think that's what they should do, but you know, don't want to admit what they did wrong. Yeah, like, I mean, like, if your single friend is giving you advice from the standpoint of, like, well, I can't tell you how to keep your nigga because I don't have one, but I can give you some tips and tricks on what not to do. Like, look, this is what I did, and this is why I ain't got no nigga. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying that we are one in the same, but, you know, you might bump into the same problem, and you might pick the same outcome that I picked. You might choose violence when this should be a peaceful day. <laughs> not violence. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I'm saying, bro. Like, these helpers be choosing violence, man. They be choosing violence. Speaking of choosing. Choosing lava. Apparently, there's an epidemic going around that I didn't know about. TikTok? It it got clarified on TikTok. Oh, okay. I know this real now. Okay. But I didn't notice this. Because I seen someone say something about it. And in the video, they referenced it. Then later, I seen the whole video, and I found it funny. So apparently, there are dudes out here who are shooting their shots at studs because they know that some studs actually look good when they're not in studly form. Have you seen the transition videos on the Tiki Taki? No, I get that. Okay, these be because, some bad nigga bitches. Because there's that one chick who, the one who I claim started it all, where she would take these beautiful studly photos. Okay, beautiful studly. Yeah, she's in full blown stud outfit. She has her stud uniform on. Okay, studly. Okay, Tom, I'm, I'm fucking with it. Studly. She, she still looks beautiful to the point where you got regular straight women who are willing to risk it all for her. Then yes, you do. You got those transformation ones where we used to seeing you in a wife beater and a pair of silk boxers with some LeBrons on, but then all of a sudden today you decide to put on this, you know, maxi dress. I get it. But then there's the studs that you just know that's a stud. You just know, like, look, she's a nigga bitch. That's, that's <laughs> all she is. She's never gonna be nothing else. Why would you want to shoot your shot at that? And apparently dudes are doing it. So, um, what's the stud comedian? Not the one from Grand Hustle, but the uh, the one that does all the TikToks on the, and stuff. On the internet? Yeah. Uh, easy. Easy. So, the original video came from Easy. Easy's in the car, literally going on about the fact that dudes have been shooting a shot at her. Now, here's the thing. Easy's a little popular. So she's like, if you've seen her out and about, you'd be like, hey, that's the chick from the internet, right? But you also know that she's into girls because all of her TikToks lately has been her and her girlfriend. Yes. She rarely does anything with the crew anymore. It's just her and her girlfriend, okay? And even when she was with the crew, she was still a dude. So she was like, yeah, man, this dude came up to me and was like, yeah, baby, let me get your number. What's going on? And she was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm a stud. I meant to do this. Like, yeah, I know I date studs too. That's fucking hilarious. So I'm like, there are dudes out here. I like studs. That like studs. Um, um, so we shouldn't king shame, Tom. I don't know if niggas done found the loophole. Because, you know, you got some niggas that they gay, but they ain't gay. Yeah, wait, like, I don't know where you're going, but let me stop you before you get there. Because you're not going to tell me that niggas that found a loophole in their sexuality. I think they have, no, my dog. No, 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 no
that's no, not no, what no. we're talking about right now. Bro. So you finna sit here and tell. Okay. So you got these dudes who like kicking it with they niggas all the time. Okay. They 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 they, they women bash all day long, right? right? They they just hate women being beautiful, successful women, right? You you just said it. They only the, they on the internet all the time. Okay. Certain niggas wake up every day, bash, bash, bash. Ooh, it was a great day. Go to bed. That's all they do. Okay. So we we get to the point where we were like, look, y'all hate on women so much, you must like men. Okay. So, but you don't want to take dick because that's the that's the, the final final level, the final piece of armor to be a gay. You gotta take dick. Okay, wait. Wait, wait. I, I see where you're going. So let me add another loophole to your loophole. So they want to date dudes, but they don't want to take dick. So they date a stud. Now, what happens if during this relationship, it's like, you know what? I might could take a dick. So you ask her to peg you just to see if that's kind of your range. If you into that, because technically, motherfuckers not really... Motherfuckers gonna look at you weird, but in the confines of your relationship, you're still technically straight. So you didn't do a gay activity as that they say, but I feel like if you put anything in your butthole and you're a straight man, you're not gay man. You can't kink shame one. I know, but like... <laughs> <laughs> that's the loophole, my nigga. Oh, that's a sick loophole. That's they loophole. That's nasty. It is nasty. And we need like more opinions. Like we, we're gonna bring that back up and like pre-pro for Hoshley Albert. We're bringing that back. Don't pimp, put a pin in that tone. Don't forget that. Why is Wells Fargo calling me? I don't, I don't know. I, I'm uh, letting him leave a voicemail. It's 7 30. Why you owe niggas money at 7 30? I thought work day was over at five. <laughs> First and foremost, I don't have any direct relationship to Wells Fargo. So if Wells Fargo is calling me, they owe me money. That's also a possibility. But it, like you said, it's Sunday after seven o'clock. I'm yeah. not answering that. Do you remember when Sunday used to actually be a day? Where like businesses like stopped at like a, a reasonable time? Yeah. Like shit wasn't open past like 7 30, 8 o'clock. You remember when the corner store really wasn't open on Sunday? You had to go to the Arab one? I don't think that was one of my neighborhoods. It was a corner store in your neighborhood. Oh, no, you know what? I'm thinking of a Mimi neighborhood. Yeah. No, but like, yo, so back in the day, like, penny candy used to really be a penny candy. Yeah, you get yeah. the little, little, get the little, little, little nickel sack of the fruities. Greatest thing ever was my elementary school. I had a corner store right by it Word. that sold all the penny candies. Like, oh, all crack. of them. That's cracking. Like, you walk into the store. And there's a regular store, and then there's a little counter right by the front door with a glass that you can look into with just levels of candy, bruh. Don't don't have a dollar. Oh, you going crazy oh, at a you buck. don't have a dollar, fam. It was it was a wrap. The first your first hustling job ever was slanging candy. Man, because you get a hundred pieces of candy for a dollar. That's the illest plug ever, bro. A hundred pieces of candy for a dollar because they really a penny. Niggas had a quarter. They had a great day. I just want you to understand. I just want you to hear that. I am, because it was really penny candy. And I just want you to understand how much the world has changed. Because they have a quarter, had the greatest candy. They have a quarter, they have the greatest high now. Because yeah. if you got a QP, yeah, it's a great day. It's a great day. If you had a quarter back in the days... It's a great day. It's a great day. Ten cent juice, couple pieces of candy, maybe got you a Starburst. Max. No, break it down. You got yourself uh what's the chocolate one? Which one? The striped chocolate one. It looked like a zebra cake, but it was the shape of an oatmeal pie. Oh, the fudge round? Yeah. Fudge round, ten cent hood juice, five pieces of candy. Great day. Bro, like, yes, where is those days? Like you used to go in the corner store with a buck. And ball up and ba ball Come your fucking up. heart out, though, with a buck. Come up. Like chips was 25 cent. Snack cakes was 50 cent. No, nah. honey buns were 50 cents. Snack cakes was a dime. 
That's the see. That's before me. By the time I was ten, they they bumped was, up. Every day was a quarter. I remember the day when whatever was a quarter went to thirty five cent. I was so confused. Duh, <laughs> yes. Walking in the gas station to see a quarter bags of chips for thirty five cent was puzzling. That was, that was a wild ass number to jump to. You know what's crazy, bro? That I'm almost out of wrench. I ain't never. I ain't gonna say never. But have you ever noticed, like, when you go in the gas station out there, no more small bags of chips? It's very rare that you see small bags. Everything is like a dollar, dollar twenty-five. That shit's crazy. Because a small bag will cost you about a dollar now anyway. So I'm not going to carry this low small stuff when a little bit bigger. I could tax you 25, 34 cents more. Do better. That definitely makes sense. Mm -hmm. I was in the gas station yesterday. I was like, no, you don't carry any small bags of chips anymore. Have you noticed that most gas stations don't carry the cheap two liters no more? Yes, I've seen that. You want to know why? Because the cost of a cheap two liter is actually less than a 20 ounce. You can make more money off a 20 ounce though. Because mm-hmm. the 20 ounce will run you almost a dollar fifty to a dollar seventy five, depending on what gas station you go to. But a 20 ounce of the cheap stuff, one dollar. Maybe a dollar twenty nine, depending on what gas station you go to. And don't be one of them trail ass gas stations that got three liters. That was just a dollar. I don't know why the fuck a three liter was a dollar. Why wasn't Wildwood as big as like Sprite? Because I don't think it was everywhere. But Wildwood was the shit, bro. But I don't think it was everywhere. I think that's the problem. Because niggas can't tell me Peach Wildwood not a top five soda. You work out in in the whites, right? Yes. Y'all stop for gas out there? Yes. Next time y'all go get gas, check to see if Wildwood is in there. In their cooler, I will. I don't think it. I don't think it makes it outside the inner city. Cause you know what they see, but you know what, Fuego makes it outside of the inner city. Cause they got Fuego out there where I be at. Fuego has blueberry. Facts. <laughs> Bust it. <laughs> and they got a cotton candy joint too. I, and I get mad when I go for a blueberry and they only got cotton candy. Cotton candy, yeah, man. That cotton. But candy. you know why those those work. Because uh, you can mix those with other drinks, and they still, you know, come out pretty good. Like, do a cotton candy vodka mix, and guarantee you that shit gonna have you on. Cloud it's just now. like, yeah, like Wildwood. Wildwood is dope, but you you might be right. Walgreens used to have a cold brand of soda too. I think it was like Big Bear or some shit. Is that that one that had it in the vending machine outside for a quarter? Yeah, I used to be in the vending machine outside there. I respect them for that. I respect them for putting their own vending machine <laughs> with their own sodas and sold it for dirt cheap. Because it'd be days that I'd be at the corner, I'd be at the counter, I'd be like, damn, I'm gonna grab this mountain dude. 159, walk out the door at 25 cents. Fuck it, I'll do a can. Bro, 25 cents soda gets you right. That's all you needed. Did you right? 25 cents. And it'd be this not it'd, 25 cents. It'd be the same, it'd be knockoff flavors like moon mist and stuff like that. <laughs> Pickers, I used to have a soda machine. It was a soda machine in the break room, and it was one in the vendor. It was a vending machine in the hallway in the liquor store. Motherfuckers was 25 cent when I first started working at Pickers. I was always catching the soda for the buck. Got to, bro. Then I came in there one day, that shit said 35 cent. I was like, what is with the 10 cent price wild, increase? With a you wild need? ass increase, bro. Who just walk around with a dime and a quarter? I don't know. See, another thing, like, okay, so I had a friend, homegirl. She's very cool. Appreciate her. She texted me. She was like, hey, yo, Juan, I need $6. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I I was so fucking upset about $6. It's a random number, dog. And I was only upset because I'm like, bro. Like, even though I'm like, we all got cash app and all these electronical ways to send money, it pissed me off because I thought about it. Like, if I was to have cash money in my pocket, what are the chances that I have six fucking dollars in any form? Like, what are the chances that you have six singles and what are the chances that you have a five and a single? Like, if I take a hundred out. And you, t- and you bust it. All right, if I take a hundred out of the out of the bank, all right, and then I bust it, you go give me twenties. As you should. Now, 
when you bust the 20, you're going to get, depending on how you bust it, it's 10 and 5. You might just bust it down to all fives. It was just like, what the fuck cost six dollars? Did she ever tell you? What is five ninety nine? <laughs> it's just like, oh, just what is that? It's an arbitrary number. That's what it is. And I was just like, in the context of money, like, if you need six dollars, why not just ask me for ten? Like, if you need two dollars, why not just ask me for five? Because there's a better chance of me having a five dollar bill versus me having two loose ass dollars in my pocket. I mean, it's the fact that he expects you to have cash to begin with. It was just like, yo, this is so fucking random, and it pissed me. Like, no, I sat thought about that shit for like two days. It's it's funny <laughs> that we barely carry cash anymore. That I didn't realize it, but I had been walking around with fifteen dollars in my pocket, in my wallet, for like four days, like a ten and a five. Like, like how, three, how was it? Like three fives. I had three fives in my wallet for like four days. That's specific as hell. Like, did you buy something? No, I think I bought some for Teresa, and she gave me. I had, no, Teresa need to need to borrow five, so I gave her a twenty. And she brought you the 15 back? And she brought me the 15 How, how nice of her. She doesn't like owing people. Uh, so. any, other, any other relative would have been like, yeah, bro, I just bring you the 20 back. No, she gave me my 15 back because she knew I needed it for lunch money. Because, you know, I work in an office now and I got to fucking, you know, use the vending machine. Speaking of the vending machine. <laughs> you got to keep money on me. You got to keep money on me. No, no, we got we got these smart vending machines where you can Apple Pay. It's a big ass, dumb fucking Apple Pay sticker on it. Okay, but them little two dollars be adding up. Like, how you think I feel? Like to get a good bottle of water, two dollars. Vitamin water, two dollars. Soda, two dollars. Well, actually, it's a dollar seventy five for the soda, but they hit you for the two dollars first, right. and then give you your quota back. I work in a grocery store, two dollars. And again, like I just said, there are no small bags of chips. And then, like, even walking through the chip aisle, bro, everything you is three, buy, you everything three is three, everything is three twenty nine or better. Got about three dollars. Hey, but you get flavors you can't get in the small bags. Though. I just be like, bro, the only thing that's dope about working in the grocery store is getting like shit you saw on, like somewhere. It's like I know this ain't at the gas station. All right, like the the flaming hot ruffles. Fire. You can only get those in big or medium bags. You can't get those in little bags. I just be like, bro, it, like as you said, like that shit add up. It should add up, dog. I went to go check my thing for the week. It's like thirty-five dollars, vending machines. Yeah, I could believe it. Waters. It has all been water. I I've been floating on the soda maybe two two three days. Then then imagine if I like if I want to splurge and have actual food for lunch because there's a hot deli. So <laughs> so in my class in my group because you know I just started the job right. So I'm still grouped up with my original starting people. Groupies, town be with the group. Everybody in my group is Everybody well. In your group. It's 16 in my group. Ooh. About 10 of them are under the age of 30. Ew. Okay. That's disgusting. Yeah, they 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 cool. They're pretty pretty level headed. Okay. And they tend to want to go out to eat a lot on lunch breaks. We get an hour lunch, right? But it'd be places they'd be wanting to go, like mangoes and stuff like that. Like for lunch, like whatever happened to just going to McDonald's? <sighs> these these are sophisticated people. They don't I, just... <laughs> back back when I was getting hour lunch breaks, low like key. we we be all up and all up and down the downtown area going for foods everywhere. But that that get expensive. We went to Pizza Shuttle last week. Sober. Yeah, I was. We didn't stay sober. How was the food? Because so- I've always like I'm a fan of their chicken. I've always been. That's how I actually started liking honey mustard chicken. I don't know. I don't think I've ever eaten pizza shuttle sober. Yeah, I've never eaten Ian sober. Ian? Yeah, I've never. Nobody eaten, should never eat that shit sober. sober. But just you know, getting a couple of drinks and and my chicken damn near broke me at forty bucks. I'm like, look, fam. Yeah, y'all fancy. Again. Like eating like Nick, this, how you get drunk on your date. lunch break. I don't get drunk on my lunch break. Like, why is it okay to have a cocktail? <laughs> you know, let's not talk about that. You don't know what kind of jobs we do. So, I don't. 
this sometimes you need a uh the reason why I got my drink that day was that's when the news dropped about everything going on. I've not I'm not judging why are you did look. Tom, I'm just saying you 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 just asked me why are you getting a cocktail on your lunch? I just told you that's the day the news dropped. I'm just saying okay. look, I, who am I to judge? I used to leave work and go get high and come back. Right. And I worked in retail. And that's the same thing. So I understand for that too. Um, you know, as long as you can still do your job or you don't come in smelling like whiskey, you good, in my opinion. Yo, we used to have this nigga named Percy. I knew he was trouble. That nigga sound like he drink wild now. I, I knew he was trouble <laughs> when they introduced me to him like my first day. It was like, yeah, Juan, so it's the ICS team, and you know that that's Carolyn, that's JT, and, and that's Percy. Percy just looked like he looked glazed the fuck <laughs> over. Then it was like, yo. When he sweat, like from working hard, you like smell it. you can <laughs> like you bro, smell the vodka it is, on the nigga. <laughs> it was seven thirty in the morning, fam. Why are you this fucking drunk? I mean, Lacage sometimes be going in. You never I, know. <laughs> but I couldn't work drunk. Working high is one thing. But like to be drunk trying to do some shit, man. You ain't got no balance. You ain't supposed to, you think like you ain't supposed to be drunk. You're supposed to just be relaxed. How do you know when you too relaxed? Look, you gotta know your own tolerance. See, that's that's the unique thing about being at the age I'm at. I already know when I've reached my my point. You know when I've reached my point. Yes. Okay. I, I told the class, like you can always tell when I'm drunk. It's like, how can you tell? My hands go up. And they stay there. <laughs> see, and you can see, and that's exactly how I explained it to. Him. And it stay there. That's how you know I'm drunk. It's like, uh, why uh, would you do that? Because I'm usually the designated driver. Yeah, so if my hands are up, I'm you done. either a, you either a need to get me a bottle of water and make sure I'm sober by the time we get up out of here. B, you may have to take the keys and drive. Or C, we all ordering Ubers. So it's just a fair warning to everybody. I wouldn't want it to be two o'clock and it's time for us. Like, all right, man, it's time to go. And the driver's too drunk. Yeah, facts. I don't I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that. I don't, don't want to be in that situation. So what music you've been listening to? What is that what? So what music you've been listening to? Um I've been listening to a lot of old shit. Nothing did you did you do the replay? The replay of what? Apple. Uh yeah. Or it runs down like what you listen to in twenty. Oh, a lot of fucking Jeezy. It's like man, that shit came in like the span of a month. And well, of course, Mac Miller was number one on mine. Uh, I just get high and go down rabbit holes. But speaking of music, I seem to have ruffled some feathers on Facebook. What you do? A couple of days ago. So there was this Facebook stat that I decided to share that said. No rapper could touch Lil Wayne in his prime. No rapper in their prime could touch Lil Wayne in his prime. In his prime, right? Yeah. Hmm. We're, we're talking about now. You might not be wrong there. Now, when you say like, because prime is like Carter Three, right? When, when I think prime, I think there is a stretch of man, minimum five years. That you know, you just that nigga. You on your shit. Can't nobody fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? It's a conversation. You have to respond. Now you know how it feels. Shut the but, <laughs> but yes, I I understand. I'm trying to see what, what your five year span is. Okay, so I feel like because I'm looking, I'm trying to follow, I'm Googling. I feel like from 2006 to maybe 2013. That was the best little one. Okay. As, as far as rapping go, like he was everywhere. He had all these features. And then Carter Three ended up getting a Grammy. Like that was the best little one. To 2003? Let's see what all was on at that time frame. No, it was in 2006. 2006. I'm sorry. Try to give him some years. Carter Three, We Are Young Money, The Rebirth. Hmm. It was actually a pretty solid year. That's what I'm saying. Good run right there. The so, crowd is over. Right. Like, Mixtape Wayne is from at least, like, 2006 to 2013. 
that's like that's undefeated. And they like now here's where like my discrepancy with the Facebook was. It's like so everybody keep telling me I'm wrong, but then nobody's providing evidence on why I'm wrong. Like I'm, I'm, trying, just, I'm trying to see what all came out in 2000. Continue. I'm still here. But now that's what I'm saying. Like, like niggas is, is like, if you tell me I'm wrong, that's but cool. You can't back it up. I, I could be wrong, but, you know, let's have this conversation. Because if 06 to 2013 is the best we've ever seen Wayne, that's cool. Now, you go find Jay-Z, and you show me Jay-Z's prime, and then we compare, like, the stats and what happened. So if you feel like from 98 to 2003 is the best of Jay-Z. And that's cool. I give you that. Hove was unstoppable. All right. Here we but go. But niggas didn't want to have them kind of conversations. Like, so 2008, let's see what all came out. Then my one homeboy told me that T.I. was burning a little wine. I told him to slap himself. Um, definitely slap yourself on that one. I was like, no, in what universe has T.I. ever been better than Lil Wayne? Like, what? I mean, it was some... Now, I get it. Music is very subjective. You can listen to whatever you want to listen to. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, bar for bar, on a skill level, T.I. cannot rap better than Lil See, Wayne. See, the problem with uh, music is we don't want to ever look at our favorites as not being up there. No, nah, I don't, I don't want to listen to Lil Wayne in 2022. You know what I'm saying? We don't we don't want that. And I wish he cut his hair like bro, his hair is falling out. But in 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 2008, the year of the Carter three, uh, he sold a million in a day. He did. But dog, uh, in okay, we're what? not gonna talk about how much shit happened around that album in that release day. It would not. Okay. So he technically had free publicity forever in a day. See, I feel like music is subjective until niggas start talking, until you start talking numbers and statistics. That's when it's not subjective. Okay, Trilla came out that year. Rick Ross. Ego Trip came out that year by Snoop Dogg. Uh, Fat, Fat Joe's The Elephant in the Room came out that year. It's a lot of stuff that came out. I don't even remember what was on there. Um, Sheik's first solo album came out that she, year. She Looch? Yeah. She Looch! Her solo came out that year. About three to four different Bone Thugs and Harmony solo albums came out that year. Why is Bone Thugs and Harmony still making music? Because people love their melodic voices. I, I, um, I don't want to hear these niggas rap. AZ no dropped. Eight Ball and EDI did an album together. I don't know why that. My favorite Atmosphere album came out that year. Uh, Prodigy, Head Nigga in Charge Part Two came out. The Roots Rising Down came out. Buckshot the Formula. Little Mama, her solo album. Yo, none of her the, debut album none came of out. None of this shit sound like it was better than. Lil it Wayne. wasn't better than Wayne. I'm pointing <laughs> like, like, all when they came out that year. Like so the I'm nigga like, won a, I he know won a Grammy. Arguing, bro. The Grammy. Dude, I'm letting you, as you can see, there wasn't too many things up against them. Singing Sounds came out that year though, by the uh, by the nerds. Everybody in the line for the bathroom. That song was about cocaine. Yes, it was. Uh, shit. So, Tom. G-Unit came out. <laughs> How much money would it take? Oh, Killer Mike, Pledge of Legion to the Grind came out. That's what I was listening to. Nas Nigger came out that year. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Untitled came out that year. Yeah, that was some wild shit. Um, How you just tell the people at the record label, like, y'all won't call my album Nigger? A lot of unknown albums came out that year. Like who who cleared that? That's why it was called Untitled. They didn't clear it. Like, <laughs> they didn't clear it. Like who? They didn't clear. Who it. gave you the okay that this was okay? You know what it is. If Nas actually was on an all black label, they would have dropped it. Oh, Ruckus would have put that. Shit yeah, Ruckus. Uh, was it Priority would have put that out? That's the name one Nas. Now, what's the other one that everybody goes to? That's like. It was the original bootleg underground album. I mean, label. They should put that shit on Death Row. Death Row would have put that out. 
I don't know. LAX by the game came out. Snoop Dogg was gonna drop a diss album on Death Row. Games The Recession came out that year. Very solid album. That was like that. That's the album that, that could have gave him some competition. The recession was his shit. Especially because my president was black. And his Lambo was blue. That that's that song age well. Yes. Cause my president was black. Yes, that song would have sucked if he never became president. But- I'm just like, yo, <laughs> and what he- happens if he does not win? No, no, I think he won when they finally released it, but he was good. You see what I'm saying? If he was like bullshit, and that's nah, we've never seen it again. That's just your boy LL dropped um album number 13. That's just like WWE out here making merchandise before you know motherfucker gonna win. Now, what happened when they don't win? Oh, there was a there was a a special in the news I watched one day about that because you know every year for football they already have shirts ready to print. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter what team wins; right, it, it, they determ- make both it determines what print they turn on. So before they got smart and started waiting until who won before they hit the button to start pressing, they would press both. In the losing team, they would send the shirts overseas to starving Africans. So here's here's an African with the Green Bay five time championship ring on <laughs> shirt for a Ima- year. We didn't we didn't win. Imagine opening that box, you'd be like, "Y'all know we got TV, right? They didn't win. We watched the game. Like they uh, didn't imagine win. imagine getting like three whole shipments of Buffalo Bills championship shirts." Oh, back in the 80s? Yes. Oh, man, that would have been terrible. That's the only reason why I like Don Beebe. Because he was on the Buffalo Bills? No, he didn't give up. Even though he was getting their ass whooped, he still ran that still ran that ball down. And he came to the Packers, got a ring. Yeah, got a ring. Because that's, that's just what happens when you trust in the Lord. I feel like when you got a name like Don Beebe, you have no choice but to be great. Got to be great, bro. At, at whatever your craft is. Got to be great. You can't be out here. You can't flip burgers with a name like Don Beebe. Although it sounds like you probably should be like a short order. Cook. Oh, Paper Trail. So, not bad, albums, not top 10 albums of 2018. So, these are all the albums that you can kind of compare to Wayne's run that time. You had Paper Trail. You had 808 and Heartbreak. You had The Recession. All of those are solid efforts. You had LAX by the game. You had Plies, the definition of real. I've never been really a Plies fan. You're not wrong. He's an acquired taste. <laughs> Just like Gucci Man, I've not really been a Gucci Man fan. Acquired, but he's acquired. I get it. Uh, Theater of the Mind wasn't Luda's best album, but at this point in time, you've been getting fast in the Fury money. You only making music to make music. This is when Luda cut his braids off. Right, it's like you just making music because this is what you do. This is not. You don't need this. I album. feel like when rap niggas cut their hair, they lose their superpowers and ability to rap. You had Trilla. You had Untitled by Nair. By Nas, and yeah. then you had Ego Trip. The only reason why I like Ego Trip because the remix with uh Lil Kim on it. These are all solid albums. I solid album. I just don't believe like they weren't fucking with Wayne back then. Like, they wasn't. I'm not gonna argue with you on that one. They were not. Wayne was on his shit. I feel like you could go fresh out of the '80s, early '90s, and go get a prime LL Cool J, and I feel like Wayne will rap circles around this nigga. But that's just me. But that's two different eras, though. But man. I'm saying though, like. The conversation, the the stat was any rapper in their prime. Okay. So if you go get I'm bad LL, I don't think you fucking with mixtape Wayne. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There's a couple of other people who we might have this are who can kind of be thrown into that they were doing their thing during that time frame. Well, you did have the return of Jay Z. You had Blueprint three about this time. That album was garbage. I'm but Jay Z has always been Jay- a solid solid <laughs> contender. Let's keep it real. He's always been a solid contender. Just because Jay-Z can rap, niggas put way too much stock in the Hove. Like, when Hove came back after his retirement, these drops were subpar as a bitch. Okay. That Kingdom Come album, booty. Well, the Kingdom Come album. Now, America Gangs, he hit. Because that was supposed to be a soundtrack. But it it didn't matter. It was fire. He did what we were. He did what we've been talking about doing, making a soundtrack to a movie that don't exist. But the movie existed, and he just didn't get picked up to do the soundtrack. So he did his own soundtrack. I, I, That's some wild shit. I like That's some narcissistic though. shit. If that ain't a Sagittarius move, I don't know what is. Yeah, man, niggas. 
niggas, right. niggas just niggas put too much stock before in we, Before we get up out of here, are we going to go see House Party? When does that shit come out? 13th. Of this month? So next week. I mean, yeah, we can. I feel like we have to for the culture. See, we got to stop throwing that C word around, bro. Everything ain't of or for the culture. No, House Party is the cult. It's for the culture, dog. This movie ain't. Of this movie is not for the culture. To me, from what I see in the previews, it feels like a modernized version of the first one. It does. Keep it a buck. Because the first one, even though we remember Kid trying to fuck both Sydney and I don't even know what the black girl name was. Shireen. But Shireen was the better looking one. Okay. I don't know why. I just, I've always felt that Shireen was better. That's because AJ Johnson fine. It's fine. Still fine. Okay. The movie was basically kid trying to fuck both of them and go to this party without his dad knowing it. That's literally, that's literally the whole movie, dog. That is the premise of the whole movie. I feel like because you're going to want to review this on the show, yes, Tom, we get. I'm, I'm riding to, with I'm you. I'm going to see it regardless, bro. We, whether you come or not, that's on you. We, get, I, I'm with you. I, okay, I'm not, we can go. But see I feel like just looking at the previews, there's two young niggas who's like, "Hey, we got to make some money. We in LeBron James' house. He gonna be gone. Throw a party. Party gets out of hand because like that would happen at Play's house. That's definitely what happened. And they kicked everybody out, right? The only thing that bothers me about this is Anthony Davis is at this party. He is. He should be in the gym working on his free throws. Most definitely. But why are you at a party at your teammate's, teammate's house? house and you know your teammate not right. here? <laughs> Anthony Davis is dope. Um, That's the only reason I want to know about this. But it looked like it could be interesting. And it's cool to see some young cats. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna see how smart. There's a lot of movies we're going to go see this year. Uh that are not Marvel. Yeah, definitely not Marvel. House Party is one of them, low key. I definitely want to see Creed. Creed three. We gotta see Creed three. Uh man, because the re- Jonathan Majors is getting money. The reason why I want to see Creed three, because it's original story. See, Creed one was just like a, a spin-off of all the Rocky movies. Okay. That it, it was one of those the boxer becomes a teacher. That's really what Creed 1 was. Creed 2 was like, yo, I got to avenge my father's death. So it was fucking Star Wars <laughs> in boxing. <laughs> we got to avenge my father's death. That's so all. I- you feel like this is an original story? It of- feels it feels original. Even though I, I've seen the story itself before. Like I told you, it's literally uh, in the comic books. It's a cyborg story in so many words. I feel like, but I love how it makes sense. Like, bro, you became somebody, and I took the L for you. You never I've, took care of me. I feel like Creed Three is going to be what the original Rocky was, but with a modern twist, with a better right. Because the original Rocky was this whole standpoint of Apollo Creed. He needs somebody to fight, right? So he gave this bum ass nigga a chance. Which Rocky, Rocky's the bum ass nigga. He's always been now, the bum ass nigga. Creed three is like, you took this L so I can go do better with my life, but like folks, like, hey, I did you a solid. You need look out. That's basically now I'm a but I'm a but he gonna beat the shit out of Michael B. Jordan in this fight. He gotta fight twice, even if he don't. He gonna whoop Michael gotta, B. Jordan up. if he don't. First of all, Jonathan Major has to fight somebody before he fights Creed. If he don't fight Creed twice in the same movie, oh, whoever so, whoever he whoever fight first, fight first, he, he, he killing. He got to he got to whoop the dog shit out of him to the point where my nigga shook. Cause Tessa Thompson, whew, I will always love her ignorant ass. She ain't funny, funny, but she funny. She funny, fine. What register like? What registers in your brain to let you know that you got knocked out? Have you ever thought about that? Like, how hard does a motherfucker have to hit you that something in your brain clicks and it's like, night, night. It just, it shuts off. Like, it's sleep mode, for real. I think that's what it is. I think you go to, you literally yeah. go night, night. It literally, the sun cuts off. Human sleep mode is Like, crazy. the sun cuts off and you are on the ground. And then the fact that there's a dude across, there's a dude right in the corner yelling at you to get up. Why? 
No, like, <laughs> nah, bro. Like, you want me to stand on my feet so you can hit me like that again? Uh-uh, bro. You got to be wired different to be a I boxer. I feel like every knockout, that's when that round should end, and then the three-minute corner break goes into effect. That's what I feel like. I feel like you shouldn't go back to fighting. Because if I if someone put punched you hard enough that you hit the ground face first, like you didn't you did not have the common sense to put your arm in the way to, to brace the fall, you should not be required to go back out there right away. I'm saying, so you saying after every knockdown it should be a three minute grace period? After you do the ten count or you try to do the ten count, if you get up, the ref checks you, it should be boom, round is over there. Cause we already know who got the if we're doing points, who got the round? That's crazy. So why do why do we need to continue? We already know who got the point for that round, right? Imagine imagine beating his ass all around. Then he slip he sleep you with like a, a lucky punch. Round and he over. knock you down. Round over, point goes to him. But you've been winning, you've been ahead on points all around, Tom. You can you can you can stick me 27 times, but that one that one from the mountains. Put you on the mat. I think that's more important. So, what is the purpose of this? What is the purpose of boxing? It's to knock someone out. Uh, it seems like I did that, right? That's not fair. <laughs> I got up though. I lose this round. Stop. Hey, be like Floyd. Keep moving. You think you could be a boxer? Nope. I'm old. I'm talking about back in your youth. Mm, mm. No, I don't like pain. I feel <laughs> like I'm gonna give it a buck with you. I don't like. I don't want to be hit, dog. Like, don't like that, don't hit me. Don't hit me on my side. Cause you know you guys still gotta take body shots too. Don't hit me on my side. No, bro, don't hit me. But yeah, so Cree, uh, what's another one? Yeah, so they have released the teaser trailer for Scream Six. How did we get here? What do you mean? How do we get to how is the same? How is a nigga in a mask still chasing after the same motherfuckers? And, and, and it's not even the same nigga in the mask. But here's the thing: at least Jamie Lee Curtis was prepared for Mike. From the, la- the last three, Jamie was ready. Here's what I don't like: as much as these I was- cats ain't ready. Matter of fact, they dr- Sydney and them drive to the fucking murder. As much as I love. The Scream franchise. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. As much as I love it, it's like, the this, dumbest franchise. It, it's it's getting to that point of being like that level of dumb because it's like, all right. So the first nigga devised this plan in high school, like, hey, because your dad or because your mom is fucking my dad and my family is broken up, we're gonna kill your mom. And I can understand that. So like that. That's, it's, uh, it's not right, but, but I get it as a movie. That's cool. Then the cool. white guy gets his best friend to join in. Your dad is a fuck up. We're gonna pl- we're gonna blame all of this on him. We're gonna kill everybody. Cool. That made sense. It was actually one of the smartest moves because they had two killers. So whenever they came to question you, the other person go do some killing while you here. It's like, well, it couldn't be me if I'm here and he's still killing. Now they always get away with it. The sequel. Sydney goes to college. Understand. Let's see the next chapter of your life. The nigga mama come back to get revenge. I understood. The original killer on Friday the 13th, it was Mrs. Voorhees. Yes. Wasn't even Jason yet. So I understood why the mom came back to get revenge. But as a nigga on the outside looking in, why would I sign up to be your number two, bro? The first two niggas didn't make it out this alive. First, first two niggas is dead. Cause you learn from that. You're supposed to learn from their mistakes. Then we get to scream three, and this bitch got a half brother. Yo, fam, we're gonna get to that in like thirty seconds. Let me get this scream shit off. But anyway, we are at scream six, and I don't know why niggas keep signing up to wear this motherfucking suit. Sydney is clearly icing you, niggas. So if y'all really think y'all gonna kill this bitch, y'all got nothing to come. Sydney killing everybody. It sucks. We will never have another Saw moment because I think that's what made the Saw franchise so dope. And then they still kept making more Saw movies. Do you want another Saw? They've been making them on the low. You didn't know that? Because after the movie Chris Rock was in, I was like, eh, I'm kind of cool on this one. Jigsaw? Was that the one he was in? I, I think that's what it was called. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm cool on Chris Rock. I you know I, I like Chris. Chris is cool. I mean, I, I I'm cool on Saw. Oh, it's cool on Saw. Yeah, like after they had did the full, I think it was six where we're at, where the cop was. Ain't that my guy from 94 feet? Yes, it is. <sighs> we just got done to record before you got here. But before we get into that topic, right? Because that's gonna end the show. Because there's two topics right there. Uh, damn, what was I gonna say? We're going to see Super Mario Brothers too. No, you're on your own on that one. What's your beef with Super Mario? I'm okay. Chris Pratt does not sound like a not, not Italian even, guy. Not even that dog. At what point in time does does a man come and realize that uh that's not your bitch, fam? Yeah, you probably should leave Princess Peach alone. <laughs> Yo, Super Mario got to be the biggest simp ever in the fucking game. Like, like he really keep going to save a bitch that's just willingly leaving. Like, there's no way in the world that this thing keeps keeps capture. First of all, he's racist because he just assumed immediately that she would not want to be with a, a turtle. Okay. <laughs> He's a king too. It's yeah. not like he a broke nigga. Either. Right, he got power. She, he's a king. She's a princess. For all we know, they've been trolls for each other. It's already a pre-planned wedding. And Super Mario just keep fucking just it up. Just keep coming in, just messing stuff up. Because he's not from their land, so he doesn't even. He didn't even put forth the effort to learn their rules. He's just out here. Just Are you trying to call Mario a colonizer? He's just over here, just stepping on citizens for no reason. But he kick it with a mushroom. Kick it with toad. Who said that he's kicking it with Toad? Toad could just be scared for his own life. For all we know. And how do you know he's kicking with the same Toad? There's a bunch of mushroom people in this kingdom. It's called the Mushroom Kingdom, one. They get high. They are high. Maybe that's what maybe that Mario is living in deja vu. Mario is out here causing problems in a kingdom he's not even from. He's Christopher Columbusing this. He's claiming they women as his. He's out here doing stuff. He just assumed Bowser is a bad guy. Bowser is a single father trying to do the best that he can for his kids. So I just I just got uh word that um Rod Wade will be doing the Super Mario soundtrack. So I don't know if I want to be there for that. It, it doesn't make sense. So uh hold on. You trying to process this? Hold on, because I'm trying to Hold skip on. past. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to move on to, to the next topic. Wait a show. minute, I can see a Rod Wave Mario song. Like, because think about it, Mario goes to like seven castles before he even gets to the princess's crib, right? I mean, if Rod, if Rod Wave is going to sing a sad song on the fireboard, I'm with it. Nah, it's got to be the waterboard. Okay, it's got to be the waterboard. Okay, I can fuck with it. <laughs> Rod Wave singing a sad song on the waterboard. Water board. It's got to yeah. be the waterboard. The fireboard, you got to be turned up. So when it's 21 Savage? Definitely do some 21 or a little, or a little Baby. 21, can you do something for me? No, nah, we need little Baby. We, a, we need, we need little Baby. Little, little Baby be floating on beats, dog. But, um, but. So, to answer my man's question. I really hope he stay his black ass at home. Okay, so first of all, the question is, now y'all know we talk wrestling. Oh, so that's what it was. So in 2023, we decided to do something a little bit different here at the Death Rush Show. Um, we have so much stuff that we like to talk about that we realize that it can confuse y'all sometimes. Um, so we are actually going to be breaking up our shows into three equally important parts. So every Sunday or Saturday, depending on what we're doing, we're going to talk either regular fun stuff or music stuff on our day-to-day -day shows. I mean, our, our weekly shows. But every Thursday, we're going to do an audio only. I'm probably going to drop that on Friday. Uh, for our wrestler fans, our, be our between the ropes. For the wrestling fan in Which you. will allow us to you know, go back to our roots and talk to wrestling, but not scare away our fans who like to sit down and watch and listen uh, I, with us. I want to... We have to have a conversation, Andre. Yeah. Because I don't understand... The Rock? Okay, so... How, how much have I grown up? Or just, like, I just... In 1998... 
Okay. In the year 2000. Okay. This shit was a okay. Right. The Rock was the man. Of course he was. He could do no wrong. He could talk the best of it. But like, why do y'all really want to see him come back? Like, is it just me? Like, I'm okay with the natural progression of professional wrestling. Okay. So, as an individual who watches wrestling just like you, um, first of all, shout out to Wrestling Kingdom. Uh, it was actually good. Long as hell, but it was good. I didn't know nobody, but you know me. I like my wrestling where you tell the story in the ring. Got a lot of that there. So for me not to know how we got here for a lot of matches. It was just good wrestling. It was good wrestling. Shout out to Leo Rush. Oh, he's back wrestling? Oh, he was. He's over in New Japan. When I tell you this boy was, he got his eye busted in the beginning of the match. I'm talking like whole spot right here. Just gushing with blood. Still moving. Still doing the matches. Finished the whole match. My dog was on point. Okay. If you wasn't a fan of Leo Rush before, watch that match. You're definitely going to be a fan of him. It's in the group. Um, we do need our nostalgia sometimes. Yes. Okay. Uh, it was some Asian dude. I don't remember who it was, but it's a name that we'll recognize because, you know, Antonio Inoki died early last year. So this Wrestle Kingdom was a big, huge uh, thank you to him. Okay. So this dude who wrestled, probably wrestle when Antonio was wrestling too. So he's in the ring with some young cats who I guess they were students of his. So it was a tribute match that they was doing for him, right? And that's when I came to the realization that old wrestlers overseas are at a level far greater than any old wrestlers over here. Because we don't want to see Greg the Hammer Valentine in the ring. Absolutely okay? right. We don't even want to see Mick Foley in the ring and we love Mick Foley. So when we get Older wrestlers that can technically still go. We had our moment with Stone Cold. We loved it. Kick Kevin Owens' ass, pillar to post. The Rock is also the other healthy person that, if was inserted into wrestling right now, we just need him for one night only, and he'll do okay. Okay. Now, given the Bloodline storyline, okay, I'm I'm gonna say this: The Rock should have been inserted last year. Not this year. Because at the moment right now, we got too much going on. That's too good. Right. We that, got we got Sammy doing his thing to the point where we sitting here like, mm, I think right. Sammy's going to take this belt. I feel you know? like with the way that they're building mm-hmm. Sammy Zayn up right now, for you to have Rock come in and wrestle Sammy, for you to have Rock to come in and wrestle Roman at WrestleMania, Defeats the whole purpose of whatever we're doing. With well, it, it, it defeats the purpose of what's going on right now. But I feel this is why I said it should have been last year. When the Tribal Chief run was really going and we were really putting the stamp on Roman, like you're going to carry the company and we're going to make this for this phenomenal storyline to make him the official Tribal Chief, it did have to be The Rock. But... He did have to wrestle The Rock to make it, you know, boom. I'm the official chief, bro. You can go back and just make money. I'll see you when you buy the company. Kind of a situation, right? But they always put that seed about Solo. Okay? I hate that, too. Okay? And I think that's where a lot of people are latching on to The Rock scenario. Because with Solo and Solo being inserted into the storyline as somebody from the old heads like we're going to give you this enforcer because we need to protect our tribal chief kind of scenario and then when roman was getting a little bit big-headed it turned into one of those like hey you know solo got to go back and tell the elders and then the elders was like well we need you to come have a conversation and roman was like no you have to acknowledge me i don't have to acknowledge you then that's when you're supposed to send the rock. Man, that's some stupid shit. In fact. Man, this ain't no fucking movie. Wrestling is a movie. Man, one. You know that. some shit is stupid. That is stupid. Right. To you, because you like where they are now. I'm not saying that they need to go, and, oh, well, let's go do this and get it out the way. No, you can wait until after the company is bought for all I care. 
Because once we get done with the Sammy storyline, where do we go next? That's the only issue with this bloodline. When the Sammy story is done, where does the bloodline go next? Because eventually the Usos are going to drop the belt. We just need to know what team they're going to drop them to. Because you got to put them back in rotation. Does he really create cash, bro? Like, I mean... That's why I say let's wait until this buyout. That's that's what I want to talk about on the next edition of Between the Ropes. I want to talk about this dumbass statement that I've seen somebody made in the regards to Sasha Banks now being in New Japan Pro Wrestling and the buyout. Because first of all, once Vince got, got cleared of all charges, my dog walked into the office like, all right, cool. We're going to sell the company now, but I'm going to put myself in charge before we do that because, yeah, I'm I, I'm the major shareholder. And if y'all don't put me in charge, I'm going to take my major shares and stop anything y'all try to do going forward. So put me back in charge or else. Because it's his company. So he came in and he bullied his way back into his, into his spot. Now he wants to sell it. So I definitely want to talk about that. I mean, we saw this coming anyway. Did we? Yeah. I didn't see him selling it. I seen him just not doing nothing for a while. Nah, it's like a nigga when you just got to quit it after you know you just did a triple homicide. I mean, I ain't talking about as of right now, him, like, this shit has been in the rumor mill forever. Like, there's always been that small little rumor that was like, hey, yo, they could possibly sell the WWE. That's always been in, in the news. It just like every time it's like every time it came up, it was like, well, what would they sell for? It's like it's not like business is going bad. Like most people equate when you sell something it's as it be, it's bottoming out. It's bottoming out. It's losing its value. But usually that's not how it goes. Sometimes you sell shit when it's at its peak, and that way you get the most value for it. I think selling it now. We're not gonna talk about that. Save it for beyond the uh, between the ropes. But we've come to the end of this episode. Uh, the devil should be rolling up shortly. Um, we are back, people. Um, we are welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I actually wholeheartedly hate that song. Welcome back. I, 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 I really do because I don't even know what else is on that damn album, but I hate that song the Bruce, most. Bruce just shake, let it go. Definitely hate that album. But well, that's what happens with old niggas' money. Sometimes you gotta do shit you don't want to do. Hate that album. Um, we're back to business as always. We'll be back this Saturday. Um, we're probably gonna talk to music. Um, we'll be talking music because one dropped this wild ass horrible Tupac song in our group chat the other day, and I definitely want to talk about it. <laughs> it was on TikTok. It's a horrible ass song. But uh Happy on TikTok, make bro. sure you check us out on all streaming platforms that's Spreaker, Spotify, iHeart Radio. Um, if you want to stick around, uh check out some uh very deplorable human beings. Human beings talk about being deplorable. But uh with that being said, one tell everybody bye. Hey make sure y'all follow my uh shoe page on Instagram at kickboxing. Just type in, just go search kickboxing, you'll find it. I'm the only nigga kicking it like this. And but, uh, that being said, we out, people. Bye.